over the last five weeks, four weeks, well, five weeks now, we've been talking about freedom, who the Son sets free is free indeed. And so what we've done is, weeks ago, Pastor David started off with this whole discussion of the release of the Lord, the year of the Jubilee, and that that is who we are now today. We're living in the blessing of that release, that freedom. It's ours. We can live in that. And then Pastor Jordan in April did a great job on how that Jesus heals the wounds, the damage from the past. And so if you, if you have anything that you're working on still from the past, go listen to that video on YouTube, and that'll be a blessing. And then we heard about how we need to stand and fight over the enemy, how Jesus sets people free. That's a tremendous teaching. And then last week, Pastor David talked about the blessing and how that the Father wants to bless his people. Okay, so let me kind of bring everybody up to date because all that we've done so far has just been preliminary coming up to today. You see, everything we've learned so far in the 40 Days of Freedom has been a precursor, if you will, to what we're going to talk about today. And because today, I want to share some things that that really is the heart of God for the people of God and for those that are watching online here today. We're going to talk about the power of your purpose. The power of your purpose. Okay, so here's the background. Here you have Jesus. He walked among the people for three and a half years. He did signs and wonders and miracles. He brought in and ushered in the presence of God. He brought in the kingdom of God. And his 12 disciples, they saw this. They were amazed. The multitudes followed Jesus. And then we know he went to the cross. He died. He rose again. Now his disciples thought that he was going to be ushering in the kingdom of God right then and there and overthrow the Roman government. But Jesus had another plan. And what happened is right after the resurrection, his guys are standing around in Acts chapter 1, and they asked Jesus this question. He, they said, hey, are, 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 are you going to restore now the kingdom of his, Israel and, and overthrow the government, etc.? And Jesus made a statement. I'm going to read from Acts chapter 1. Because Jesus inaugurated his plan right here in this verse. He said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, and I'm reading out of the Passion Translation, I promise you this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be filled with power and you will be my messengers to Jerusalem, throughout Judea, the distant provinces, even to the remotest places of the earth. Jesus said, guys, you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You see, Jesus' agenda was not to bring the kingdom at that time to overthrow the Roman government. He had an agenda to take the gospel kingdom around the world. And what he was doing was setting his men up for his purpose. So there's three facts that I want to cover this day. And I want you to listen very carefully because this includes everybody here. Fact number one is you were designed for a purpose. Number two, you were gifted for an assignment. Number three, you are to be commissioned with power. So number one, you're designed for a purpose. You were gifted for an assignment. Number three, you're to be commissioned with power. So let me just kick this off here and start with this whole concept of being designed for a purpose. Did you know you were designed for a purpose? There's a specific call, a specific, specific plan that God wants to work out into your life. Let me read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, a very familiar verse. I'm reading out of the Passion Translation again, where it says, even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we should, would do to fulfill it. Now look at the operative words here. Before we were born, we're talking way back when, in the beginning, God planned in advance our destiny and he designed what we should be doing, the works that we should be doing. You see, you are designed by God for a purpose. Now, I'm going to use the NASA space shuttle, if you will, as an example as I break this open here this morning here. So here, on the screen, you're going to be seeing a picture of the space shuttle. Many of you know about this very clearly. We used to fly way back when. And, but I want to talk to you about this space shuttle and just use it as an example because you see, this space shuttle, NASA designed it, engineers designed this thing for a specific purpose. It was designed to be put on a launch pad 
It was designed to go up into the air. It was going to go up into the sky and the stratosphere, if you will. And it was to be, be uh, committing and doing a specific assignment and, and doing the specific missions that they were created to do. And then it was to come back down to the earth. It was designed for a purpose. Now you see, this space shuttle was not designed just to sit on the launch pad. Think about that. It was not designed so that people can build it and then look at the manuals and study it some more and take it apart and rebuild it and rebuild it and take it apart. It was not designed so that the astronauts would go up into the capsule up on top and drink coffee and have bagels and, you know, read the manuals and then come back and then read the manuals some more. No, 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 no. It was designed to launch up into the air execute a mission, and to come back down. And you see, but the problem was, is it sits on the platform. This thing's four and a half million pounds. This thing is heavy. What is going to get that thing up out of the ground, off the launch pad, and into the air? There is, in physics, what they call escape velocity. Now, I don't want to get, I don't want to get technical here, but basically what the engineers had to do was they had to answer the question, okay, what's it going to take to get this thing off the launch pad, up into the air, to finish what it's designed to do? And they calculated out that it's going to have the need of about 18,000 miles an hour to get that thing off the ground and into what it's purpose was designed to do. The reason we share this story here is that many of you are like on this launch pad. And God says, okay, what is it going to take to get you off of the launch pad and get you up into your purpose? You see, friends, you were designed for a purpose. You were designed to enjoy God. You were designed to be able to hear God's voice. You were designed to be able to sense his glory and his power. You were designed to know his will and to walk in the spirit and to be able to pray and see answers to prayer. You were designed to make a difference on this earth. You were designed with a specific purpose. And you see, that's why we talk about this whole subject in the 40 days of freedom is that we go through healing, we go through spiritual warfare, we go into the blessing, and now we get the power to have the escape velocity to launch us in, and that is the power of the Holy Spirit. That's where Jesus said, you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us because you and your own strength cannot fulfill what God has called you to do. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to have the necessary inertia, strength, and calling to be able to fulfill what God has designed for you here. So number one here, you're designed for a purpose, created unto good works, which God has called you to do. That's number one. Number two, you were gifted for an assignment. Now you see, God's got a plan his plan always works, and you are a vital part of that plan. And some of your assignments may vary. You might be called to work in the marketplace as a vice president. You might be called to work in the marketplace in various services. You might be called to, to work in education. You might be called to work in, in, the, in the theater or in music or in whatever, the medical field. You may be called to work within the local church. You may be called to be a children's pastor or a greeter or, or an usher. You might be called to be able to be on the worship team here. Everybody's got an assignment. Nobody's left out. You're not a mistake. Everybody's got a place. And you see, this is why we talk about the Holy Spirit, because in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help one another. Because you have an assignment, but in order to fulfill that assignment, you're going to need the empowering of the Holy Spirit to be able to step into the opportunity for, to fulfill and live out that assignment. And so we go into the discussion of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and then other places as well, where in the Bible we see 21 gifts of the Holy Spirit. And there's some more. People have different ways of counting them here. But what we want to share with you here is that we want to pray. And now some of you watching here, you know what gifts of the Holy Spirit 
God has given you. These are graces. These are things that God has given you the ability to do, which is a supernatural impartation for you to step into your assignment here. And so everybody's been given gifts. I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 talks about the nine gifts. You got the power of gifts, revelatory gifts. You got word of knowledge. You got tongues, interpretation, healings, working of faith and miracles, etc. And then in Ephesians, you got the fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And then in Romans chapter 12, you have what we call the redemptive gifts. You have gifts whereby, you know, you gift of giving, administration, gift of service. So there's a whole long list. And one of the things we do at Gateway with our grow tracks and our school of ministry is help people identify the gifts because it is the gifts of the Holy Spirit that will be the fuel behind you becoming fruitful in your assignment. So you're designed for a purpose and you're gifted for an assignment. Let me give you an example here. There was a gentleman years ago, back in the 40s and 50s, his name was T.L. Osborne, Tommy Osborne. Tommy Osborne knew he was called to be an evangelist. He knew he was to preach the gospel around the world. So he goes to India years ago, and he runs into some Muslim and Hindu priests. And he begins talking about Jesus Christ. He begins sharing about the kingdom of God. And all these gentlemen, they begin to dialogue with Tommy Osborne about their gods, about Jesus, and who is Jesus. And they had this discussion, and it got on and on and on, and nobody was changed. Tommy Osborne was frustrated because not one person received Christ. It was just a general discussion. He became very frustrated. He comes back to America. He goes back up to Portland, and he's about ready to quit the ministry. And then he sees some other ministries coming into town, and he hears about the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. So he goes in, locks himself into his closet. He tells his wife, I'm not coming out until I receive the power from on high. He's in his closet praying and fasting. He has the vision of Jesus. Jesus is giving him the gifts of miracles and healing. And there was the power of God that came upon him because he had an assignment to do. And the, get, the grace of the Holy Spirit was giving him the ability to do his assignment. He goes back to India and he runs into the same crowd of people, the guys, the Muslims and the Hindus, etc. And they begin the dialogue again. He just interrupted the dialogue. He said, you go find me as many blind and deaf as you can. You pray for them and however you want to pray. And if I'm a man of God and my testimony is true, I will pray for them in the name of Jesus. And we will demonstrate. This is one of those Elijah on Mount Carmel showdowns, baby. Because what happened was he had the anointing of the Spirit of God for his assignment. They go out and I think the story says they have 12 or 14 blind and deaf people lined them up. These guys prayed for them. Nothing happened. Tommy Osborne prayed for them and every one of them, eyes opened up, ears opened up. Every one of those guys that were in the group that day, they saw the power of God. Every one of them dropped to their knees every one of them got healed. Even our own apostle, Emmanuel Canastrasi, I was talking to him recently, and he shared how that he was down in South Africa ministering in John Lake's uh, churches, and he was up in the front, and they brought up a young man who was deaf and dumb. And even our own very own apostle, Emmanuel Canastrasi, he said to the crowd, if I'm a man of God, and my testimony is true, then God's gonna heal this little boy with death and dumbness. He laid hands on him and God immediately opened up his ears and he was able to speak. We're talking about a demonstration of the kingdom of God. We're talking about these men fulfilling their assignments by the anointing of the Spirit of God. What about you? What has God called you to do and what do you need by the Holy Spirit in order to fulfill what he's called you to do? Now, you see, I was raised in the Roman Catholic Church. I knew very little about the Holy Spirit. And when I received Christ, I was 20 years old. And when the Holy Spirit came upon me, I began to speak in other tongues. It blew me away. I did not know what this was about. I heard a couple of testimonies from other Catholic priests, how the Holy Spirit came on them. I began to study the Word of God. And I began to see, you know what, this this is real. This really could be, could be something that, that God's doing in my life. It was several months after that. I'm in a prayer meeting 
and I knew God was working in my life, dealing with, with areas in my life. And we're on, I'm on my knees praying, and an older man comes by, puts his hand on my head, and he begins speaking in tongues over me. Now, when we say speaking in tongues, it's praying in the Spirit. That's an old vernacular term. Speaking in tongues, praying in the Spirit, etc. Praying in what the Holy Spirit gives. Anyway, this man began to pray in that prayer language. And what shocked me, I mean, it just totally shocked me, was that I understood every word he said in English. I later found out it's called tongues and interpretation. The Holy Spirit gave me that ability to be able to hear what he said, and I understood it in English. And what he said to me was, my son, I want to use you, get ready, prepare, seek me fast, and something to that effect along those lines. I forget the exact words, but it was so stunning that I'll never forget that day. But I knew that from that time on, I needed to begin to seek God and to re get ready to be used by God. And then it was several months after that, that God put on my heart just this passion to see sick people and to see damaged people, broken people, to see them healed. I couldn't get out of, them, out of my mind. I would see people at the stores or on TV or whatever that were sick, and there was just this idea that, you know what, I believe God wants to heal them. And so what happened was I began to seek God for that, that ministry because God put it on my heart. What I didn't realize, though, was this whole area of the anointing to be able to, to heal the sick. And so as I said, there's 21 gifts there may be other gifts that, that God gives you, but for me, there was something there that God wanted to do, and he wanted to give me that anointing to fulfill my assignment. So here's what happened. About eight months after I received Christ, I'm in, down in Southern California, and I'm praying for this gentleman to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I wasn't ready for what was about to happen. It totally took me by surprise. I had my hand on this gentleman's head, and I was praying for him, Lord, fill him with the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, just like that, it felt like something touched me right here on the shoulder here. And it was like a 120, 220 volts shot across my chest, down my arm, and it shocked me. Like, oh my God, what, what was that? I felt that. I'd never felt that in my life. I'm thinking, where did that come from? And I was praying for this gentleman. This gentleman began to cry and to weep because what had happened was Jesus had just opened up his left ear. He was deaf in his left ear. And all of a sudden, I began to realize, wow, Wow, that's what that was. That, that's what that was, that anointing that, that, that came out of Jesus when it healed that, that, that woman with the issue of blood. Wow. And so I began to be, experience more and more of the gifts and the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. My wife and I, through the years, we got just many, many, many testimonies of different ways that the Holy Spirit wants to use people's lives. I have a book coming out later this year that I'm, I'm writing right now. It's called Prophetic Business Development and how that you in the business world can receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit and use those in a business sense. I got a lot of stories. I got a lot of different testimonies and so we'll let everybody know when that's available. But get a hold of this. The very first time that God used me to prophesy over somebody was in 1991. So follow this here. This may take a few minutes, but this is, this is going to bless some of you here. Because what had happened was in February of 91 was the first time I came to Evangel before it was Gateway. And I met Pastor David Canastracy, and I met Apostle Canastracy as well. And they were having a prophetic presbytery. I came in the back. I had just shut my church down. I'm sitting in the back, and up on the platform, you had Pastor David, Apostle C. You had three or four other gentlemen who were prophets, and they were doing prophetic presbytery. I'm thinking, oh my God, I've read about this. I've never seen this. Isn't this awesome? And what they were doing was ministering prophetically over people's lives as to what God's plan was and what God was going to do, etc. I sat in the back just like a kid in the candy store, like, oh my God, I've never seen. This is so so awesome just to see this. I've only seen it. That was the first time I'd ever seen it. Later on that year, Bill Hammond, the prophet, and his team, they came into town. We had a prophetic conference. And the brochure said, seasoned prophetic ministry will be prophesying over the pastors. So I said, I got to see this. I got to see it again. I've only seen it once. I got to see it again. So I go that, that Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock, I go to see seasoned pastors, prophetic people, 
prophesy over the pastors that were there. And so I'm standing there in the second row. I will never forget this. Pastor David walks up to me, grabs my coat, and he says, come and pray with me. Uh, you got about 15 minutes. You're going to come help me. And I said, to help you what? And I'm thinking, set up chairs. What do, you, what do you want? He said, you're going to come prophesy over these people. And I froze. I'm thinking, oh, my God. I've had no training. I've only seen it once. And I got 15 minutes to get seasoned. I'm thinking... God, I'm freaking out. I have no idea what I'm going to do. So I go in the prayer chapel, and I'm standing there, and pretty soon the place is packed with pastors and leaders, and I'm, I'm freaking, my knees are, are, are clacking and whatever, and I leaned over to Pastor David. I said, what am I supposed to do? And he says, do what I do. And I'm thinking, okay. So anyway, we have this couple come sit up in the front. Pastor David gives them a prophetic word, and then he gives me the mic. And then, I can't explain it. It was just like that bolt of electricity that came across my arm. Something came on me. All of a sudden, I knew some things about this couple. I can't explain it. My point was the Holy Spirit came on me at the right time, at the right situation, because he had an assignment for me to prophesy over these people. I began to prophesy. They began to cry. I'm thinking, oh my God, what did, I, did I say something wrong? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And from that day on, God has used us in a variety of ways, you see. And I thank God for Pastor David seeing that. It took me 15 minutes to get seasoned. But something will come upon you. And this is what we want to teach. In fact, later on this year, my wife and I were talking about having a, a Holy Spirit seminar and really talking talking about the gifts of the Spirit. My point is this, is you've been, given, been gifted for an assignment. What is your assignment? What does the Holy Spirit want to gift you? Because you see, God wants to use you as an ambassador of the kingdom. And the only way to do that, the only way to get off that launch pad, the only way to really step into it is for everybody to step into the flow and the anointing of the Holy Spirit and to see what God has for you. And I tell you what, friends, when you learn what that is, you begin to grow in it. It's an amazing thing. So that's number Number two, number one, you're designed for a purpose. Number three, you're gifted for an assignment. Number three is you're commissioned with power. Now, in Acts chapter 19, Paul goes to Ephesus, and he asks this question. He says, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And you see, that's a very valid question here today. And if you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit then I want to encourage you to do what Paul told Timothy. He said, Timothy, fan into flame the Spirit of God. You see, a lot of times we let the Holy Spirit kind of lay dormant. And he's standing by our side. He's waiting for us to engage with him, to host his presence. He wants to, he wants to come out of us here to be a, a world changer. And many times we got to start to, to, to fan into flame. How do you do that? By praying in the spirit, by getting into worship, by trusting him to anoint you to go do what God has called you to do. But I want to talk just for a minute here. Uh, and the last point here this morning is if you've never received the gifts of the Holy Spirit or the baptism, of the Holy Spirit. I want to go over just a few points here, and then at the end, I'm going to pray. I want you to get ready, because the last time we did this here at Gateway, we had testimonies of people who were watching online, and families were together, and the Holy Spirit came down and began to baptize members of the family right there in their living room when they were watching. It was an amazing thing. You can be driving a car. No, well, maybe, maybe you shouldn't drive a car. You can just be, you can be anywhere. You want to be careful because we've had some amazing stories of people kind of getting a little disoriented when the Holy Spirit comes on them. So be careful in the car scenario. But here, let me give you several pointers here if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. Number one is no that it's God's will for you. See, a lot of people, they don't know. Is, is the, do, do I, do, should I get baptized in the Holy Spirit? I had never heard of this one. And somebody said to me when I first got saved, raise your hand, God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And I'm thinking, what, what is that? You see, Peter said on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter two, he said, this promise is to you and your children and to all that are afar off. It is God's desire to fill every Christian with the Holy Spirit and to be able to give them gifts so their assignment and their purpose can be launched into what God has designed for them to be. So number one, it is God's purpose and God's desire that he fills you. Number two is you need to ask. Jesus said 
If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father give you the gift of the Holy Spirit? You need to ask. And when you ask, all you need to do, and we've seen this happen many, many, many times, many different ways. We got several of the pastors here in the auditorium here when we're, we're videotaping this here, and they got different testimonies here. Pastor Jordan, I'm sure you got all kinds of different testimonies of people, you know, that have, how they, they just said, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes upon them, and it's a beautiful thing. It's just like, sometimes it's like a wind. Sometimes it's like a wave. For me, it was like heat going through my whole body. Anyway, it's the whole Holy Spirit, and God wants to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus said, if you know how to ask for good gifts, and you're a father, and you know how to give good gifts, how much more will the Father give you the Holy Spirit? And then number three is basically just believe that you receive. Jesus said, whenever you pray, believe you have it, and it'll be yours. And so what happens is I've seen many, many people where they just say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And then they just say, thank you. Thank you for filling me. And the expectation is there because you know what, friends? God has got a desire to fill you more than you know. He's got a passion to touch your life more than you know. He wants to be able to bring the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the comforter, the one that brings peace, that brings courage. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to leave you bereaved of the future and, and looking and wondering. You see, it's amazing when we, we get filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit begins working in your life. You have the fruit of the Spirit love, joy, peace, etc. You have the presence of the Holy Spirit. He, Jesus said, I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. And you can have the Holy Spirit 24-7 living with you, next to you, hearing from him. It's a beautiful thing. And that's where we encourage people to ask, believe God, and believe you receive. Now, when that happens, there's a variety of different things that take place. Many times people, and we see this in the book of Acts, many times people begin to pray in the Spirit. We call it praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit. There's a variety of gifts that get manifested. There's three or four examples in the book of Acts where when the Holy Spirit came upon people, they began to speak in other tongues. And we just got all kinds of different stories of what happens. Now, when you begin to pray, and if nothing happens, what I encourage you to do, come by Gateway. Come by. We want to pray with people. In fact, this coming March 27, that's a Saturday afternoon, we have a special Gateway Healing Center meeting right here in the auditorium. That's a Saturday afternoon. We want to pray for anybody that's in the local area here, or maybe from a distance. We're going to gather together. We're going to lay hands on people, and from a social distancing I mean, we've prayed for people over the phone thousands of miles away. God's poured out his spirit. You see, prayer knows no distance or time. And we're going to pray with people, and we're going to believe God for the Holy Spirit to be poured out. It's an amazing thing. It's a beautiful thing. And we've encouraged people to begin praying in the spirit, and they get, they get their prayer language here. And then over time... God begins to use them and God puts them in opportunities where they can begin to use their gifts. That's one of the reasons we are so strong in small groups here at Gateway. We have what we call life groups. People get together in small groups because that is the perfect place to begin to learn how to minister in the gifts of the Spirit, how to pray for the sick, how to hear from God, how to be able to move prophetically. And so we encourage you, if you're not in a life group, get in a life group and that's where you begin to learn how to use the gifts of the Spirit. And come to the seminars. Go to Grow Tracks. Learn more as you can, much as much as you can about the gifts of the Spirit. And I tell you what, wouldn't it be an amazing thing? Pastor April, wouldn't it be an amazing thing? This place get filled up again with everybody here, and then everybody here knows their gifts. Everybody here knows their assignment. Everybody here knows that they've been designed for a purpose. And so here's what, let me just kind of repeat this again here. And then we're going to pray. We're going to have the worship team come on up here. And we're going to worship a little bit more. But let me just kind of recycle here a little bit of what I said. The whole purpose of the 40 days of freedom is not necessarily to talk about how the enemy has held you down and you broke free from that. That's, that's vital. That's important. Or how he's healed the wounded heart and the damage from the past. That's that's very important or the year of release you see everything we've done so far has come to this point right here right now so that you can get set free get healed get delivered whatever you get all this stuff out of the way so the presence of God can be sensed in your life and our passion here at Gateway is that you would sense his presence in such a powerful way
You could sense his love. You can sense his closeness. And there's just this joy and this comfort that comes upon you. And then you, if you've not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you just say right now. In fact, let me just pray right now. I'm going to pray right now. And and wherever you're at right now, just begin to lift your hands and begin to just minister to the Lord. And I'm going to pray this right now. Father, I just thank you in the name of Jesus that everybody that's watching online here, regardless of where they're at, Lord, And regardless of when they watch this video here today, that, Lord, you're there in their lives right now. And, Lord, our first desire is that in Jesus' name that they would know you want to fill their life with their anointing. You want to fill their lives with purpose and assignments. Lord, you want to fill their lives with your goodness and your love, your abiding love that never leaves, Lord. And so right now, Father, we ask in Jesus' name, and so just repeat this after me. Father God, I ask to be filled with your Holy Spirit. I desire to know what my assignment and what my purpose is, and I want to know what my gifts are, and I want to be a part of your kingdom, to be a, a world changer. I want to be on assignment, Lord. So I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Lord, I just stretch forth my hands to anybody that's watching online right now. Wherever you're at, I just pray, Holy Spirit, come upon them and rest upon them. Let there be the wave. I'm just sensing prophetically right now that many of you here, you're, 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 you're sensing the heat. It's a heat. You're sensing the presence. You're sensing the glory of the, of the Holy Spirit upon you right now. Some of you here, you begin to, you're beginning to sense something coming up out of you here. And it's almost like where you can sense there's a prayer language. And I'm going to pray, I'm going to show you here just in a second what that is. And when that comes up, you can just begin to start praying. And you see now, that's, that's the tongues, but let me give the interpretation of that here. Because the interpretation of what I just said, and that's one of the gifts in the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, the, the, what, I, what I just heard the Lord saying is that it's easier than you know. I want to fill you with my life and my glory, and it's easier than you know. Just reach out, reach out, and let me fill you. That's what I just said in the Spirit. That's tongue and interpretations. If you want to learn more about that, come come and talk to us. We can share with you some more, some amazing different stories. But Father, I just praise you and thank you for this day in Jesus' name. I just thank you, Lord God, that we know that years ago, Jesus, you said to your men, to your women, wait for the power from on high because you want to give us the ability to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And I thank you, Lord God, that we are designed for a purpose. We're gifted for an assignment, and we're commissioned with power. So I commission right now in Jesus' name, everybody that's watching, you be commissioned with power so you can go forth and do what God has called you to do in Jesus' name. Amen, amen.